So I was just thinking about this. What makes studying so difficult and what makes a career in doing research where you're studying all the time, that is my career where I actually just study all the time. What makes that actually so difficult? And I was thinking about this relating to my son who has uh, been studying for a fair bit in the last little bit. He's in eighth grade and I was relating it to myself. I was thinking, okay, why is this so difficult to actually sit down and study? And I think the key thing is social isolation. It is being removed and pushing away other people so that you can actually get some work done. It's not actually doing the work that is so exhausting and so difficult. It's actually doing the thing where you have to push away and be by yourself. And I see this in my own career where the challenge, the key thing that is the most difficult is actually that ability to push away and to be social isolated for a long time. Human beings are not meant to be like this. Human beings are very, very social creatures. If you go back in history in terms of how we were raised and what we do, we usually normally work in groups. We work in sort of, you know, tribes or clans or whatever, right? Like small groups and we'd be always around each other. But in order to produce, in order to get more done, being socially isolated, which is a pretty, um, recent phenomenon, I would say recent being in the last 500 years, we've realized because of, of sort of what they used to do in monasteries, for example, where if you were socially isolated, you were able to produce a lot. And in that case, the idea was to do, do that as a, as a form of suffering. Right, being isolated in a, in a monastery is a form of suffering, which was a way to prove to God, basically, how um, committed you are and how good of a person that you actually are. And that history is actually built in to much of ac the academic game, right? The academia actually came from monasteries many years ago. That's the sort of story behind it. That, we studied, we look at things, and then um, incorporated into that is a very modern idea from the last 300 years from Adam Smith, where if we specialize and we do very narrow roles, and this has been built into the academic system, especially in the last 100 years, we do very narrow roles that we can produce more. And what is that from? That was actually a, a Frederick Taylor idea that has been built strongly into the modern academic system, where if we are by ourselves, we are isolated, we can produce a lot more, we can actually get things accomplished. Now, the trouble with all of this is that human beings are not meant to be alone. We will feel the, the negative emotions, we'll feel all sorts of, you know, um, not great things inside because of being alone through it. And I think this is the hazard of education. This is the industrial hazard mostly of education. And this is the prime reason in my view why people actually quit um, at various different stages of their life. When they realize that they have to be studying alone, doing it, where they're working and pushing away family or you know, hanging out with friends, whatever, all of these kind of things that are, are innately human, that drives us to not feel good, right? And this only gets worse as you go through the career, by the way, it gets very, very much isolating and very much where you're by yourself and focused by yourself. Now, what I've been thinking about is that I do think we need to tra change this. I think we need to figure out ways, and, and I'm not gonna say that this is gonna be a massive revolution and it's gonna change overnight by any means. That's, I'm not that, um, you know, not that silly, but I do realize that this is not working, right? Uh, the sort of industrial engine that we have doesn't quite work. 
And if it did work, it would draw a lot of people and people would feel very excited to be part of it. So if it did work, right, it would feel like you're going to a theme park. That's how we know the theme parks work is people are really excited to go to a theme park, right? So how do we get this? How do we build this in? I think we need to start working on building, um, in my view, you start start figuring out how to do community better or start figuring out how to find partners better um, that you can work alongside and and start thinking about those kind of moments like that i don't know what that looks like and i don't know what that feels like but i think that that is very important part of the 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 work that we actually do that is that is that that will help us right so whether it's finding suitable people to work with in your study groups, for example, um, you know, something like that is very important. And I just don't know what that looks like at this moment and how to actually change that. So where you're doing something that it's that it's very enjoyable, it feels like a social thing, where it is something that you wake up and you want to actually do every day. So for those of you who are educators out there, let us know how you do this. Um, how do you manage this? For those that are doing research, like myself in the academic research career, how do you do this? What does this actually look, what, look like? How do we encourage more community? What are we supposed to do? All right, take care and have a wonderful day.